Chapter 20 The howling winds pushed against Kristoff as he headed back up the mountain, away from Arendelle. He adjusted his goggles and wrapped his scarf tightly around his face. Sven was lagging behind. The reindeer looked longingly back at Arendelle and the castle. He shook his head and whinnied. Kristoff kept walking, ignoring him. Sven charged ahead, past Kristoff, and then stopped in front of him. He faced him and looked Kristoff directly in the eye. What is it, buddy? Kristoff asked. The reindeer nudged his antlers into Kristoff's side. Hey, watch it, Kristoff said, annoyed. What's wrong with you? Sven shook his head and wiggled his mouth. I don't understand you when you talk that way, Kristoff told him. In a flash, Sven bucked Kristoff and lifted him up with his antlers. Hey! Stop it! Kristoff shouted. Put me down. Sven dropped him straight into the snow, hard. No, Sven, Kristoff said. We're not going back. Sven snorted his disapproval. She's with her true love. Kristoff saw Sven's doubt. He glanced back at the kingdom to make his point. But to his surprise, he saw a strange new storm swirling above the castle. He could see dark clouds forming and more ice on the castle walls, putting it into an even deeper freeze. Anna, he cried. Instantly, Kristoff changed his course and took off running toward Arendelle. Sven scrambled and raced up behind him. He ducked his head and lifted Kristoff with his antlers, then threw him onto his back. The duo raced down the hillside. Anna was curled up on the floor of the library. She had made it to the door but was now too weak to stand. No one could hear her whispered cries for help. She was so cold, and her heart ached. At that moment, the door handle jiggled. Anna was barely able to raise her head to see who it was. The lock clicked. Anna could see a carrot wedged into the keyhole. Suddenly, the door flew open. It was Olaf. The snowman pulled his carrot nose out of the lock and put it back into the middle of his face. He was very proud of himself, but his happiness melted the moment he saw Anna. Anna, no, he called. He ran to the fireplace and struck a match. In seconds there was a large, roaring fire. Olaf, Anna said. Get away from there. Whoa! Olaf exclaimed, taking in the sight and feel of the fire. He was a little scared, but he couldn't resist the warmth coming from the fireplace. So that's heat, he said. I gotta say, I still like it. He hurried over to Anna and brought her closer to the fire. So, where's Hans? What happened to your kiss? I was wrong about him, Anna said. It wasn't true love. Olaf didn't want to believe it. But we rode all the way here, he said. Please, Olaf, Anna managed to say. You can't stay here. You'll melt. I'm not leaving until we find some other act of true love to save you, Olaf said. He sat down next to Anna. Got any ideas? Anna sighed heavily. I don't even know what love is anymore. That's okay, Olaf said. I do. He sat up a little taller. Love is putting someone else's needs before yours, like, you know how Kristoff brought you back here to Hans and left you forever. Kristoff loves me? Anna asked. Her eyes widened. Olaf nodded. You really don't know anything about love, do you? Anna looked at Olaf. He was dripping from head to toe. Olaf, you're melting, she cried. Some people are worth melting for, he said. His face was quickly losing its shape. 
Olaf tried to push up his sagging head. He ran and sat behind Anna, trying to escape the fire's heat. Just maybe not right this second. A window across the room blew open and a cold gust of wind swept through. Anna shuddered. Olaf ran to the window to shut it. Don't worry, he said. I've got it. We're gonna get through. He stopped talking and stared out the window. He leaned forward and squinted at the horizon. Hang on, just one second. I'm getting something. He reached through the open window and grabbed an icicle off the window ledge. He flipped the icicle around and used it as a telescope. Hey, Kristoff and Sven, he shouted when he realized who was running toward the castle. He turned to Anna excitedly. They're coming back this way. They are? Anna asked. She tried to stand up to see for herself. Wow, he's moving really fast. Olaf said. Ha, huh, I guess I was wrong. I guess Kristoff doesn't love you enough to leave you behind. Help me up, Anna said, struggling. Please. No, Olaf told her. You need to stay by the fire and keep warm. Anna was adamant. I need to get to Kristoff. Why? Olaf asked. Then he paused. Oh, I know why. There's your act of true love right there, riding across the fjords like a valiant, pungent reindeer king. He reached for Anna. Come on. Sheets of ice began to break through the library walls. The cracks grew across the walls, and the room began to collapse. Anna and Olaf hurried out of the library just in time. Together, they struggled to make it through the hallway, dodging ice as it appeared in their path. Back this way, Olaf said, pulling Anna. But every path they tried was blocked by ice. We're trapped, he shouted. Anna spun around and spotted a way out. She took Olaf's hand and they made their way over to a window, broke the glass, and slid down an icy ramp. Olaf picked up more snow as he went. They landed safely outside the castle and took off toward Kristoff. Chapter 21 The winds were picking up as the storm raged throughout Arendelle. The snow continued to fall, and the air was frigid. The ice blocks in the fjord were beginning to shift, which made walking on the frozen surface dangerous. The snow hit Anna's face hard, blinding her, but she and Olaf continued. She held her hand up to shield her eyes when she reached the shore. It broke her heart to see the fjord waters frozen into solid blocks and the ships turned on their sides. Kristoff, she called out weakly. She couldn't see him, but she knew he was coming over the fjord, and she knew he was her last chance for survival. The ice was still spreading through her heart, making her weaker and weaker. She was determined, but was losing strength with each step. The snow was swirling wildly now, covering everything. Whoa! Olaf cried as the wind lifted him up and took him from Anna. Not far away, but completely engulfed in the snowstorm, Kristoff was riding on Sven's back, racing desperately toward Anna. As he passed over the fjord, a ship that was wedged in the thick ice in front of him began to shift and wobble. Come on! Come on! Kristoff urged Sven. At that moment, the ice in front of Kristoff shifted again and caused the ship to drop, splintering the surface. Sven bravely jumped over the frigid waters and bucked his rider off to safety. Then the reindeer fell into the water. Sven! Kristoff screamed. Sven! With a mighty effort, Sven leaped out of the water and landed safely on a floating piece of ice. He nodded, signaling that he was all right. Good boy, Kristoff called. He turned back to find Anna. 
Hans was also out on the frozen fjord, struggling through the storm. He was pursuing Elsa, however, and he nearly had her. Elsa, he yelled loudly through the howling winds. You can't run from this. Don't try to stop me, Elsa called back to him. Just take care of my sister. Your sister? Hans laughed. She returned from the mountain weak and cold. She said you froze her heart. Elsa gasped. No. She was overwhelmed by what her powers had done. Her worst fears had come true. I tried to save her, Hans lied. But it was too late. Her skin was ice. Her hair turned white. Your sister is dead because of you. Elsa dropped to her knees and put her head in her hands. The storm stopped abruptly in response to Elsa's overwhelming despair. The winds and the driving snow ceased, leaving snowflakes suspended in the air. In the sudden stillness, Kristoff finally spotted Anna. She was clutching her chest and her skin was pale, almost white. Her strength was decreasing with each passing moment. Barely able to speak, she uttered his name and fell to her knees. Kristoff. Anna. Anna. Kristoff called desperately as he ran toward her. In the quiet air, the people of Arendelle gathered at the shore, staring out at the frozen fjord. The view was finally clear, and they could see their queen kneeling on the ice, her head bowed. Prince Hans stood just behind her. Chapter 22 Though Anna could barely move, she lifted her head to see Kristoff coming toward her. But nearby, in the other direction, she suddenly caught sight of something else, something she could hardly believe. Was that her sister? Could Elsa also be out on the ice? Anna tried to focus. Then she realized that Hans was standing over Elsa, who knelt on the ice, her face buried in her hands. Horrified, Anna watched as Hans drew his sword and raised it over her sister's head. He was taking his time, almost smiling with anticipation. Anna knew that kissing Kristoff was her last hope for survival, but she couldn't bear to see Elsa in danger. With great difficulty, she turned away from Kristoff and moved toward her sister. Elsa, she cried. With a final surge of energy, Anna lunged, using every remaining ounce of her strength. She threw herself in front of Elsa to block Hans's blow. Anna, she shouted. In that instant, Anna's entire body froze, turning into solid ice. Hans's sword came down at full strength on her body. The sword shattered. Hans reacted in angry astonishment as jagged pieces of steel fell into the snow. At the sound of the sword, Elsa turned and saw Anna's frozen body, one arm raised to shield her sister. Anna! Elsa cried. She jumped up and threw her arms around her unseen sister. Oh, Anna, she said, weeping. No, please, no. Elsa sobbed, hugging the frozen figure. Behind her, Hans was fuming. He quickly picked up his broken sword and started to swing it at Elsa, but Kristoff ran at him just in time. He hit Hans right on the jaw and knocked him down. There would be no second blows for Hans. Olaf ventured forward, looking up at the sisters. He was shocked to see Anna so still, without movement or life. Anna, he asked sadly. He stepped back as Elsa hugged her sister and cried. Kristoff, Sven, and Olaf all bowed their heads. So did the dignitaries and citizens of Arendelle, watching from the shore. A somber silence fell over the kingdom. Suddenly, as Elsa hugged her sister, drops of water began to form at the tips of Anna's fingers. Then her arm began to bend. Anna was beginning to thaw. Anna! 
Elsa exclaimed. Elsa, Anna murmured. She opened her eyes and smiled lovingly at her sister. Elsa laughed with joy. You sacrificed yourself for me? Elsa asked in wonder. Still weak, Anna replied simply, I love you. Olaf gasped. An act of true love will thaw a frozen heart, he said. Anna's sacrifice had saved her own life. Elsa found herself turning Olaf's words over in her mind as she slowly realized their full meaning. Love will thaw. Love. Of course, she said. She hugged Anna again and laughed. Of course what? Olaf asked. Elsa took a step back and raised her hands above her head, and the snow drifted back up to the sky. Next, the ground began to shake and move. The ice and snow began to melt. The fjord waters thawed and a boat rose, lifting Elsa and the others onto its deck. Soon all the boats in the fjord were returned to their upright positions. Elsa waved her arms one more time and revealed a sunny sky. The warmth of a summer's day spread across the kingdom in one joyous moment. All of Arendelle cheered. Hands down, this is the best day of my life. Olaf exclaimed. But the snowman was again starting to melt. And, he added, quite possibly the last. Elsa looked over at the dripping, sagging snowman. Oh, Olaf, she said kindly. Hang on, little guy. She waved a hand over Olaf and surrounded him with a swirl of cold air. Olaf quickly refroze and looked like himself again. Best of all, he now had a permanent little snow cloud above his head to keep him from melting ever again. Ha! he exclaimed. How are we doing this? Hans climbed to his feet, still dazed from Kristoff's punch, and turned to Anna. Be but she froze your heart, he stammered. He thought Anna had frozen to death back in the library. The only frozen heart around here is yours, Anna replied fiercely. Then, with all her might, she punched him in the face. Hans fell backward into the water. Anna grinned. She was feeling warmer already. She caught sight of Kristoff and grinned. Then she hugged Elsa again. The sisters held each other tight. Neither one wanted to let go. Chapter 23 Summer returned to Arendelle, and the waters in the fjord were full of boats moving cargo and people. Hans sat locked in a cage on the deck of a ship preparing to return to the Southern Isles. I'll return this scoundrel to his country, a dignitary told the royal handler. We shall see what his twelve brothers think of his behavior. Nearby, Arendelle soldiers were leading the duke and his two guards to their ship. This is unacceptable, the duke protested. I am innocent. I'm a victim of fear. I demand to see the queen. Oh, right, the royal handler told him. I have a message from the queen, Arendelle will henceforth and forever no longer do business of any sort with Weaseltown. Weselton, shouted the duke. It's Weselton. In the village, Anna hurried through the streets, pulling a blindfolded Kristoff behind her. Come on, come on, she called to him. Anna led Kristoff straight into people and almost slammed him into a pole. You're not a very good blindfold guide, he told her. Finally, they stopped. Here we are, Anna said. She pulled off Kristoff's blindfold. Before them sat a beautiful new sled. I owe you a sled. Kristoff was taken aback. Are you serious, he said. No, I can't accept this. Anna laughed. You have to. No returns. Queen's orders. She's named you the official Arendelle Ice Master and Deliverer. 
That's not a thing, said Kristoff with a smile. Sure it is, Anna said. And it even has a cup holder. Do you like it? Kristoff hugged Anna. Like it? he asked. I love it. I could kiss you. Kristoff looked into Anna's eyes and suddenly felt bashful. I mean, I'd like to. May I? I mean, may we? Wait, what? Anna leaned over and gave Kristoff a quick kiss. We may, she said. Kristoff smiled. Then he leaned in and kissed Anna right back. But this time it was a real kiss, sweet and romantic, and perfect for Anna. Not far away, Olaf was happily enjoying the summer weather with the help of his little snow cloud. He held a big bouquet of flowers up to his nose and took a deep sniff. Suddenly, he sneezed, and his carrot nose shot off his face. Sven was standing nearby, and with a quick movement of his head, the reindeer reached out and caught the carrot in his mouth. For a moment, it looked like Sven might chomp down on his favorite food. But instead, he gave the carrot back to Olaf, who happily popped the carrot back onto his face. Just past Olaf, Anna saw something else that brought a smile to her face. The gates to the castle were wide open. Elsa stood in the courtyard. All around her, people were putting on ice skates. And the parts of the castle that had been destroyed earlier were now fully repaired, with ice. Are you ready? Elsa was asking the crowd. She raised her arms, swirled them in the air, and created a beautiful ice rink. Anna ran to her sister. The gates are open, she said. I like it. Elsa put an arm around Anna. Let's never close them again. Then, with a smile, she pulled Anna onto the ice so the two could skate around the rink together at last. Behind them, Sven ventured out onto the ice, too. But his skating didn't come so easily. His legs slipped and twisted as he struggled to keep his balance. Anxious for his friend, Kristoff chased after Sven, awkwardly trying to keep him upright. Last came Olaf, who slid over to Anna and Elsa. Together, they all skated happily across the ice. Summer, as well as love and happiness, had finally returned to Arendelle. The End